Hello everyone, we're back with Salem. We're still trying to figure out what's going on. The basic sum up so far is that we're currently talking about the churches uh, involving into the Chaldea or security organization. Uh, Geronimo's here, hanging out. Last episode we talked about soup, and I think that you're about caught up. Okay. <clears throat> the Chaldea security organization hasn't just been sitting around twiddling its thumbs, waiting for these stray demon gods to reappear, you know. These agents are just sort of part of our overall effort, though. I have to admit that it wasn't easy finding people with no familiar or community ties to get to come work for us. Roman always excelled at hiring the right kind of people. He did leave behind a manual detailing, detailing his procedures, but it's just not the same. Still, it definitely helped. Once I knew where to look, it was just a matter of balancing the budget. I've recruited the mages, demonology experts, and exorcists and stationed them in cities of interest. And Boston just so happened to be one of them. The other North American agents should all be gathered there by now. At this point, we're just running recon. Since we're not on site ourselves, the best thing we can do right now is gather up as much information as we can and figure out our next move. So we wait for news from people we trust? That's right. At times like this, there's nothing wrong with depending on others for help. You've really grown, Wilkie. Thank you, Da Vinci. Trying to handle everything yourself is the height of arrogance, and you can lead to terrible mistakes, and in the end, you're left with nothing but grief. I'm relieved to see the self-sacrifice isn't your answer to everything anymore. <laughs> so, isn't there any anything we can do? Of course, plenty, in fact. Now that the alert levels have been raised, we're going to report from all over the world. Somebody has to determine if they're authentic, and whether they're related to what's happening in Salem. I'd like you to handle that, Mash. <gasps> Understood. <laughs> now I think it's about time we pulled in a certain great detective to help us out. His work in the hangar should probably have gotten boring to him by now, so he'll probably be in his room or just wandering around Galdea. Wookie, would you mind speaking with Holmes yourself? Of course, I doubt you'll have much luck when he barely even pays attention to what Watson has to say. I see, don't worry. We'll handle that too. I'll drag him in here by force if I have to, just like Miss, Mrs. Hudson. Besides, um, Da Vinci, have you been gooped up in here since last night? Ah, you noticed, did you? You're right, I was actually in the middle of a testing a certain summoning when the alarm sounded. Just between us, the timing couldn't have been worse. Even geniuses like me can make mistakes. For a moment, I was afraid I might have unwillingly caused the second huge Caldea explosion. Uh, not funny. Well, you can't blame me, not after Caldea's main power and backup power looked like they were about to get knocked out. I see another piece of the puzzle in my investigation falls into place. Wait back up, that sounds really important. Thanks in advance for all your help, Mash. You too, Geronimo. As for you, Wokey, I want you to be ready for anything, like a good master. I agree, Senpai. Let us handle this for now. I may no longer be able to fight on the front lines, but in return I'll do everything I can to support you from the back here. That's the sort of Kohai I aspire to be. Okay. But what about the soup? We cut back to Robin eating the soup. Heh <laughs> Robin enjoying his soup in the darkness. That's what the laugh was for. That's my current guess. Thank you for... <laughs> Thanks for waiting, everyone. We're nearly ready to begin the operation now. What's more, this will almost certainly end up being the final ray shift. The final ray shift. <gasps> Meh. Medea, what are you doing here? Get away. Why is that? Because we now know that this is the very last demon god pillar, the last singularity to be observed on Earth. We may not have been able to determine where the demon god pillars that escaped from the Temple of Time and hidden themselves, but we were able to find the distortions in space-time that created wherever they went. Now that we could have done without Kaldea, of course, and it's the those reasons that are telling us they will be the last. The Mages Association and the UN have jointly decided to halt all ray shift operations following the pseudo spiritualons transfer. After this, barring authorization from the new director being appointed in December, we won't be able to ray shift anywhere anymore, no matter what. That's disappointing to hear, but it does make sense. 
We shouldn't be ray shifting after humanity has stabilized anyway, since it does involve time travel. Exactly, which is why the ray shift technology will be sealed away once we're dealt with the final instability. It's now been 72 hours since a large scale disappearance occurred in the east coast of North America with Salem at its center. Let me start by telling you now that we've learned directly from your own investigation and information gathering. First off, we've decided to call the darkness that sprang up out of nowhere to cover all of Salem the mist. Given how it absorbs all visible light and other forms of electromagnetic waves, it doesn't obey any laws of physics we are certain in the instance of Magecraft. Its scale remain, remains unchanged since it first appeared, as I mentioned earlier, near a perfect circle with a radius of 7 kilometers. We also know that with the mist extends upwards to an average altitude of 600 meters. It's easy to enter this area, but so far nothing has done so has made it back out. Every one of the unmanned vehicles, unmanned surveillance units, drones, and we already know closed circuit robots sent by the US Army has been swallowed up by the dark. Even that, they simply ceased functioning the moment they got too close. They have also tried using helicopters. I'm told they're called Apaches to lower the sensors, but all those ended being destroyed as well. So not even a single drone made it back? I'm afraid not. Each and every one ended up broken and inoperable. A number of journalists snuck past the army blockade and went into the mist themselves, but there is no sign that any of them have returned. The same is true of the trained animals that were sent in for reconnaissance. Poor things. Nor have we been able to confirm any birds or any other wild animals either coming from or going into the mist. Curses. Then it has become a completely barren wasteland, a barbaric land of darkness that does not suffer even a single watt to pass. We next tried to fight Magecraft with Magecraft by bringing in our own mages. They sent in familiars protected by magical barriers, cyber demons, automata, and more. Unfortunately, despite the local staff's best efforts, those ended in failure too. But as of last night, we finally received word that a single attempt was successful, returning with valuable new information. Could you not have just led with that and spared us all extra nonsense? I mean, what do the U.S. Army's troubles really matter to us? How dare you? Have you no respect for your sense of duty? My schedule is completely shot thanks to having to write a manuscript at a short notice. Just look at these bags under my eyes. Now, now, my friend, I understand how you feel, but let us not make molehills into mountains. The important thing is that our work is now done. Our duty has passed like a ship in the night. You there, leave that alone. You need to be dealing with the missed properties and to prepare our future countermeasures. It's especially important that you understand this part, Wilkie. You weren't able to on You weren't able to contact the inside even with Magecraft? Why were you two writing a manuscript? Oh, that. Uh, we poor feeble offers were beset by a storm last night, but I believe your attention could be better spent on the matter at hand. The only thing you made it back was a single mechanical doll. It was originally designed to be a clock before a puppet master mage disguised it as the clock master repurposed it. It's made out of oak gears, cast iron nails, and ballin, a robot created without any modern technology whatsoever. This medieval robot managed to bring back sketches of what things were like inside the mist by automatically transcribing what it saw as crystal pupils. Take a look at these. Pictures! Yeah, that looks like Salem. That's America. It's a big ass house. This is a good ass. Just, this robot draws better than I do. I see. Yes, this is definitely Salem. A peaceful, run-of-the-mill village whose pious residents lived their lives with integrity. However, this is not modern-day Salem. These sketches clearly show how it looked centuries ago. Right. We cross-referenced them with our recorders. With our records. And found that they were identical to Salem in the late 17th century. I need to remember to bring water with me. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Basically, the world within the darkness is a 17th century Salem, as it was in colonial times. I see, that would mean it's still British territory, then. No wonder the US Army was so completely useless. Be quiet! This cowardly invasion cannot stand! What about the 50,000 people who live there now? 
Remember, this is not the first time that this land has been invaded. Ah. Ugh. And damn, Geronimo just fucking told him. As we established, the recorded observations are of Salem in the 17th century. The only way the robot could have made such observations is that in the past has been faithfully recreated or if some manner of matrix is displaced in the area itself. It's fascinating to ponder, but the effects could have on humanity is immeasurable. This is almost certainly the work of a demon god pillar still plotting to incinerate humanity. Demon god pillar? That reminds me. Geronimo, earlier you said that the name Salem is cursed. What did you mean by that? It's all in the past now. It belongs to history. Do you mind if I tell you this story, Mr. Edison? By all means. Though we may wish it weren't so, this remains a part of our nation's history. Very well then. The town of Salem and its neighboring lands were home to three tragedies. The first was plague. When the white man came to our shores, he brought with it an epidemic that nearly wiped out the Massachusetts tribe living in the Boston Harbor. The second was war, albeit this war was more of a massacre. The Wampanoag tribe managed, members that managed to survive the plague put up a valiant fight. But in the end, their chief's skull still became an ornament for the white man's village. Never mind that the white man only survived the cruel winter thanks to the resources of the Wampanoag left behind. In a stroke of luck, bitter irony, the state would go on to be named after the Massachusetts tribe. Even these events would be celebrated as a national holiday. Finally, the third tragedy that took place in Salem was the witch trials. This time, the white man went around killing his own kind fearing the devil's influence has hung many innocent people. I trust you now see why I called it a cursed land. I do. Wait, trials? I thought this term was a witch hunt. So do these trials have anything to do with Jean? No, the first one. No, no, he speaks truth. Twas witch trials that took place there. That said, they were but a farce. In the court as we know it today, uh, there they were, not by a pretense for the villagers to indulge in their worst impulses. These were trials in name alone. No more than mixed use for the church to exercise its power. The weak and unwanted were stoned to death. Even the densest of fools could see these trials for what they were. By the time matters had progressed, the barbaric witch hunts, the wickedness and corruption had spread so far and taken such a deep root that the money changed hands un encumbered by virtue or concern for justice. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. They are merely characters who only ever appeared in the work of fiction. I may have made use of them myself in my stories, but I have never once encountered a genuine article. Seething. Furthermore, those who claim these fictional beings are real in order to serve their own selfish needs are simply in denial of that delusion. In mine, in mine own time as well, people sense the true fruit, skin, and scent. Even if they did not merely put pen to paper and express what they truly thought. That there is indeed a collective unconscious that fears witches at their curses, and their curses. Now that that some time has passed since then, I wonder what things are like in the modern day. I believe that the less relevant one might think. Hmm, I have no interest in determining where in the history of late 17th century Salem should fall. Nevertheless, it is abundantly clear that the piety was not the only thing the Puritans brought to the New World. Unfortunately, my Kermit voice is not as good as my, if my brother's not here. Though, but he started the voice, and damn it, we're going to keep it. Hmm, those who love sin would judge sinners by their own hands are inevitably the sort who wish to engage in sin themselves. Such people will always exist, no matter the day and the age. It's a fundamental aspect of the criminal mind. So, what then is a witch? A criminal? A victim? Hmm, the answer is the question has changed as people believes have shifted over time. As one who understands the mysterious and the mystic, and rejects the guidance of the unknowing, the unknowable god, I would say the witch trials were exactly what their name suggests, a lawful process used to judge past judgment of so-called witches. An attempt to manage the frenzied panic of the witch hunt is a stylized, civilized manner. Of course, offering madness a seat at the dinner table often comes from burgeoning and unannounced. Hmm. There's nothing to change its inherent nature. 
Thus, the persecutions of witches continued unabated in the West until it culminated in the final chapter in the New World. Ironically, in Salem, a land steeped in pious faith. Hmm, if there was a devil truly ran free, for a reason and desire, scientific spirits and occult mindsets came together. Enough! Put the violin away. What possible use could it be here? If you just want to hear yourself talk, then go to your room where you won't bother anyone. Oh, was that a bit long-winded? Here I thought I was being considerate by drawing the listener in with a genuine amount of exposition. <clears throat> I think that's enough witch trial talk for now. Oh, jeez. All right, that's enough of the that the backstory of the witch trial. I swear to the Lord, yeah, you're see. If you like this video, leave a like. This is why I said these videos are going to be shorter, but they'll be here every day. So check in next time for the next part of the story where we will hopefully have our first fight. Who knows? Let's see. Goodbye, everyone.